Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yesh Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 10th of September. Five Rafal fighter jets formally inducted by Indian Air Force. Fresh petition seeks cancellation of Pakistan's former Premier Nawaz Sharif's bail. And US envoy Khalil Zad says spoilers desperate to disrupt Afghan peace. And now for all the details. India inducted French origin the Sol Rafale, a twin engine multi role fighter aircraft, in its Air Force at a glittering ceremony on Thursday at its northern Ambala Air Base. The induction of the jets comes amid border tensions with nuclear armed neighbor China. The Indian Air Force on Thursday formally inducted five Rafale fighter jets to the fleet of its 17 Squadron Golden Arrows at a glittering ceremony at Northern Ambala Air Base. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, his French counterpart Florence Parley, Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat, Air Chief Marshal RKS Badoria, among others, attended the ceremony at the Ambala Air Force Station, the country's oldest Air Force base. The induction of the Rafal brings in major boost to India's air power capability amid border tensions with nuclear armed neighbor China. Rafale ka Indian Air Force ke bede mein shamil hona Bharat aur France ke beech ke pragad sambandhon ko bhi ya darshata hai. Bharat aur France lambe samay se arthik, sanskritik aur rajnaitik, ranitik ya saajhedar rahe hain. India has received five Rafales of the expected 36 aircraft from France in what was the country's biggest defense deal worth 8.7 billion US dollars. The jets had landed in India back in July. Together, we are writing a new chapter in India's France defense ties. And it's an honor for us to attend this beautiful ceremony. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has vowed to modernize India's armed forces with a $150 billion spending spree. Indian Air Force has also recently inducted many other modernization systems from Russia and the USA. India's coronavirus tally on Thursday crossed the 4.4 million mark with a record single-day spike of over 95,700 COVID-19 cases. The world's second most affected country in terms of number of infections is now eagerly waiting for a vaccine. Its front-runner vaccine producer has been served with a notice seeking information on the illness of a volunteer in its clinical trials in Britain. India on Thursday registered a record single-day spike of 95,735 COVID-19 cases and 1,172 fatalities in one day, taking its caseload past 4.4 million and death toll to 75,062. Amid the rising spread of the deadly virus and the government's unlock 4.0 in the country, the Indian company enlisted to manufacture a billion doses of AstraZeneca's experimental COVID-19 vaccine, Serum Institute of India, or SII, is pushing ahead with its own clinical trial, even as safety concerns force a British drug maker to hold its test. The SSI received a notice from the Drug Controller General of India seeking information on the illness of a person participating in AstraZeneca's trials in Britain. SII said it is responding to the regulator's queries but is proceeding with its own human trials in India in the meantime. Trials of the potential coronavirus vaccine is being developed by the Oxford University. The Oxford University vaccine was described by WHO as a world's leading candidate and the most advanced in terms of development. In news from Pakistan, 
A day after Pakistan's former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif filed a review petition on medical grounds against an order by the Islamabad High Court, the National Accountability Bureau or NAB on Thursday filed a fresh petition seeking cancellation of Sharif's bail in the Evanfield reference case. The High Court had directed Sharif, who had been in London, to surrender before the court by September 10. NAB's petition maintained that the former Prime Minister is a convict in the corruption reference and is absconding. Sharif had earlier assured the court of his return to Pakistan as soon as his health improves and maintained that due to COVID-19 pandemic, his treatment in London had been subjected to delay. Sharif was convicted in the Evanfield case in 2018 and was granted an eight-week bail in 2019 due to his deteriorating health condition. Moving on, People in parts of Gilgit Baltistan have been badly hit by flash floods due to recent heavy rainfall in the illegally occupied region. An atmosphere of despair continues to prevail and frustration is mounting in the flooded areas with no government help in sight. Our report. Residents in Gilgit Baltistan have expressed anger towards the Pakistani government and local authorities for ignoring them at a time when flash floods due to heavy rainfall and melting glaciers have wreaked havoc in the illegally occupied region. Locals in Geyser area said the flooding has damaged several houses, inundated large tracts of cultivated land, blocked roads and the power system is in disarray in the region. They blame the authorities for lack of arrangements and said no assistance or relief has been dispatched to them at such a time. The condition of the people living in the remote areas is painfully dismal. Residents blame Islamabad has consistently maintained its oppressive attitude towards people of Gilgit Baltistan and ignores even their basic demands. A part of the erstwhile Jammu and Kashmir province of India, Gilgit Baltistan was annexed by Pakistan illegally more than seven decades ago. Moving on to news from Afghanistan. U.S. Special Envoy Zalme Khalilzad has said that the spoilers are becoming desperate in their attempt to disrupt Afghan peace talks in response to Wednesday's attack on Afghanistan's first Vice President Amrullah Saleh. The Taliban has denied responsibility for the attack which came just ahead of intra-Afghan peace talks in Doha. U.S. Special Envoy Zalme Khalilzad in reaction to Wednesday's attack on Afghanistan's first Vice President Amrullah Saleh said that the spoilers are becoming desperate in their attempt to disrupt Afghan peace talks. In a series of tweets, Khalilzad said, History has shown that when the opportunity for peace is close, spoilers will spare no effort to try and stop it. Afghans are not falling for their trap and their widespread yearning for peace will be for the two negotiating teams and their leaders to satisfy. Vice President Amrullah Saleh, known for his anti-Taliban stance, escaped unharmed, but the roadside bomb attack in capital Kabul killed at least 10 people. The Taliban denied involvement in the attack, which comes just ahead of the peace talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban in Doha. Meanwhile, the Afghan government on Wednesday rejected Taliban claim that nearly 100 members of the group who were on the list of 5,000 prisoners to be released, which has been its condition for joining the peace talks, had not been released. The Afghan government has said that all Taliban prisoners on the list have been released, but six hardcore and controversial Taliban inmates, whose release was publicly contested by France and Australia, have not been transferred to Doha. In news from Nepal, Authorities from three districts of Nepal, Kathmandu, Lalitpur and Bhaktapur have decided to ease the lockdown imposed three weeks ago to contain the spread of coronavirus. However, ongoing prohibitory orders in the districts have been extended by a week till the midnight of 16th of September. As per the new provision, private and public vehicles will have to follow the odd-even rule starting Thursday, with odd-numbered vehicles plying on odd dates and even-numbered vehicles plying on even dates. 
operators will have to sanitize their vehicles every day. Nepal's coronavirus tally on Thursday jumped to 49,219 and there are currently 15,025 active cases of coronavirus at various isolation centers. In news from Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan Navy towed a striking super tanker away from Indian Ocean Islands east coast on Wednesday while an Indian Coast Guard plane spread chemical dispersants on a long oil slick that trailed in its wake. A fire broke out in engine room of the Greek-owned New Diamond tanker last week, which was believed to have been doused on Sunday but reignited a day later. The Sri Lankan Navy towed a strike and super tanker from the Indian Ocean Islands east coast on Wednesday, while an Indian Coast Guard plane sprayed chemical dispersants on a long oil slick that trailed in its wake. A fire broke out in the engine room of the Greek-owned new diamond tanker last week. The blaze was believed to have been doused on September 6, but reignited a day later. Laden with 2 million barrels of crude oil, there are fears that the accident could cause an environmental disaster, but so far the sleeks have resulted from escaping marine fuel oil rather than leaking crude. As of now, that not even a drop of the cargo, which is called as a Kuwait crude, has got into the water. That's the one uh, success for this particular operation which we have conducted. That's phase one is over. Greece-based Porto Emporio Shipping Inc. is the registered owner of the 20-year-old Panama flag, very large crude carrier New Diamond. New Shipping Limited is the manager of the vessel. There are no immediate comment from either company. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka is seeking to take legal action against the vessel's owner. People across the globe have been badly hit by job losses due to coronavirus. After their husbands lost work because of the pandemic, women in a small village of India's most populous Uttar Pradesh state decided to become sole breadwinners for families. Have a look. Women in a small village of India's most populous Uttar Pradesh state decided to become sole breadwinners for families after their husbands lost work because of coronavirus pandemic. It is the monthly meeting of the women where they meet and analyze the numbers of their small business and record it in their passbooks. The women of Praladpur village have leased lands with the help of a self-help group and grow vegetables and flowers on the land. Vegetables and fruits being essential items, the women were allowed to sell their produce in market even during lockdown. As part of the most popular state and one of the worst affected in the country, this village is exemplary in dealing with the pandemic and its microeconomic effects on households. According to local media reports, the village has also managed to stay free from coronavirus so far. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Five Rafale fighter jets formally inducted by Indian Air Force. Fresh petition seeks cancellation of Pakistan's former Premier Nawaz Sharif's bail. And U.S. Envoy Khalil Zad says spoilers desperate to disrupt Afghan peace. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन